Okay, guys, this is Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce Skiba Tech Tips. Now, we're going to talk about something with which I have a lot of experience. I've been diving a long time, 60 years, as you know, all over the world, all kinds of oceans and different environments, fast water, dirty water, good water, bad water, some places where I shouldn't have been. But anyway, one uh, area of uh, diving experience for which I uh, am very familiar is cold water. Born and bred here in Ontario, Canada, we have this thing called winter up here. I'm sure you've read about it. <laughs> and anyway, and when I started diving in 1958, I was very young. Uh, uh, all the diving was in cold water. Now, I didn't, do, I didn't do any ice diving when I was that young. Didn't do much ice diving for a number of years until some of the local club members got together and organized an ice dive. They'd heard about it. And we had our first ice dive. Uh, that was a number of years later. But since that time, so let's say about, let's say 1970, roughly we'll pick a date, 1970. From 1970 until about Oh gosh, 2000. So 30 years, 30 years, I did a lot of cold water diving. We dive almost exclusively in the Great Lakes. Now the Great Lakes on a good day get the 60 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, whatever that is, 16 I think uh, centigrade. Uh, on, uh, in the spring is one of the coldest, not the winter time, but in the early spring is one of the coldest and the water temperature is about 33 or 34 degrees. That would be like 2 Celsius cold. Okay, uh, maybe I need to explain that to you, that when we go ice diving, we go out onto the lake, it's frozen, you see, so we walk out onto the lake to a place where we think we, there might be something to look at, sometimes there's a wreck, or sometimes there's deep, whatever, we choose this, choose this, and we cut a hole, we cut a triangular hole, we cut it triangular because it's easier to get out of a triangular hole, it's easier to get your hands in, you see, and we cut down, now the ice that we cut is obviously 32 degrees or colder, zero or colder, you know, it wouldn't be ice if it wasn't that temperature, the water underneath is actually warmer, that's right, yes, when we go ice diving, we usually have people with us, they're called tenders, even if they're only up there mixing drinks or keeping us warm, but the tenders are the people on the line, you have to wear a safety line, they freeze to death. They get cold because it could be windy and they're standing on ice and so they get really cold. The divers actually stay warmer. I know this sounds weird. Trust me on this. The divers are warmer because they're in a wetsuit or a dry suit and they're actually in water that's 35 degrees. It could be zero or much colder on the surface Fahrenheit. Uh, zero is uh, what? Zero is about minus 12, minus 15 in that area. Uh, and it could be on the, on, on the surface, the people standing on the ice underwater, it's the same all the time. Two or 34 or 35 degrees, so it's actually warmer. Anyway, that's another story. The point to all that is I've done a lot of diving in cold water. And over the many, many years that I've been diving in cold water, I've had my regulator freeze up more than once. And it is always, uh, first of all, it's unsafe, you know, unless you're very, very careful and very experienced and very calm. Uh, you lose a lot of air in a heck of a hurry and uh, it can be dangerous, uh, but it's more of a real annoyance because your diving is over. Your diving is over for the day. Pretty much. If your regulator freezes up, it's almost impossible uh, to make another dive with that same regulator, even if you warm it up. It just, just doesn't happen. There are a variety of reasons for that, which I can explain. Uh, so your diving is over for the day, and that's a big nuisance because going ice diving is a lot of work. You get all your gear, and then all your winter clothes, you got to drive to the site, walk, and all that. So when your regulator freezes up, the dive is over. Could be unsafe and it's a real nuisance. So paramount in most divers' minds is how you keep your gear functioning properly. Now we're going to talk about dry suit. Our, our, our series on dry suits is coming up very, very shortly. And we'll talk about some other equipment as well for cold water diving. But today I want to talk about the regulator. How do you keep your regulator from being a problem on, on, on an ice dive? How do you keep your regulator from freezing? And I want to point out something else to you right now. That you don't have to be ice diving. Now, some of you may experience this. You do not have to be under the ice. You don't have to be in water that is 2 degrees Celsius or 34, 35 Fahrenheit for the reg to freeze up. If the water is as warm as 40 degrees, now what's 40 degrees Celsius, Kevin? You're better better than that than I am. But if the water is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, about 11 or 12 degrees Celsius, your regulator can freeze. That's right. A lot of people don't know that. And often we're diving in the summertime in the Great Lakes, in the middle of the summer. The surface temperature might be 60, 65 degrees, but once you get down below 30, 40, 50 feet, you hit what's called a thermocline. All the water below that is 40, 42 degrees Fahrenheit. And your regulator can freeze. 
Yes. And that's really not nice because now you're 50 feet down and your regulator is frozen. I might want to point out, I might point out this time that when your regulator freezes, it does not cut off the air supply. Just the opposite. It free flows. Blows all kinds of air. It's hard to keep the second stage in your mouth as you try to figure out what to do and get back up on the surface safely. So just so you know. So my point to all that is that 40 degrees, uh, 10, 12, 13 degrees Celsius, and colder at any point, your reg can freeze. How do you prevent that? Well, there's a number of things, and there's a couple of myths. There's a couple of uh, misconceptions out there as well. First of all, one misconception I'll get rid of right now is that some regulators don't freeze. Some people say, well, my regulator never freezes. Oh, yes, it does. You just haven't been in the right circumstances yet. Some people say, well, the old two-hose regulators don't freeze. Oh, yes, they do. I was trained on them and used them for years. Two hose regulars freeze as well. Well, my old decor, well, this, this regulator never freeze. I have a Sherwood Blizzard. Here's one right here, a Sherwood Blizzard regulator. Blizzard, give you a hint. It was designed specifically for diving in extreme conditions, specifically cold water, hence the name Blizzard. And it does have some features which will reduce the likelihood of it freezing. But it will freeze. I've frozen them. Some regs have what's called a all environmental kit. See a little plastic cover in there. You can't see it too well, but it's actually a sealed regulator. See, all regulators have holes in them. See the holes leading in there? They all have to have a hole in them so that, you know this from my previous videos, so that the water pressure can exert the pressure on the piston or the diaphragm. So you get pressure at the right level in, 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 in the second stage. They have, there has to be holes in there. But some regulators come with a special sealing cap and silicone oil in there so that water doesn't get inside the regulator. And people say, oh, it won't freeze. I have an antifreeze kit. Uh, it'll freeze. It'll freeze. And there's some reasons for that. First of all, the water that goes inside the regulator, whether it's your second stage or through the holes of the first stage, that's not the problem. Uh, it doesn't matter about that water. It has to be in there anyway. That's not what causes your regulator to freeze. Your regulator freezes because of the moisture on, in the air that you're breathing. That's right. There is a process called adiabatic. It's exactly the way it sounds. A-D-I-A-B-A-T-I-C. Adiabatic. And that process, it's a physical process. That process, if you, if you, if you read about it, explains that the temperature will decrease. It'll get colder as pressure drops in a valve or any, any mechanism where the pressure drops, it will get colder. Now work with me on this. What does a regulator do? Now, that's right. It takes pressure at 3,000 and drops it to ambient, which could be as low as 15, maybe 30 psi. From 3,000 to 30 psi. That's a big drop. And in that big drop, based on the principle, adiabatic temperature drop, the temperature of the air of the device drops considerably. Now the air that you're breathing, that you got from the scuba store, is clean and dry. It's supposed to be. Very, very clean. They can get everything out, but clean enough that it's safe to use. And very, very dry. They can get all the water out, but most of it's so safe to use. If the adiabatic temperature drop, just from you breathing through the regulator, is great enough then the small amount of moisture remaining in the air that you bought at the dive store can freeze. That's right. It'll go from water vapor to ice crystals. And those crystals will settle on the valve so the next time the valve tries to close, it doesn't close. So the air continues to flow. As the air continues to flow, it gets colder, more ice crystals, and the valve is forced open, and you get a sudden free flow. It's called freeze up. Your regulator just froze. Nothing to do with the water at all. In fact, you can make your regulator freeze without putting it in the water. If you're out on the lake getting ready for an ice dive and you have left your tank sitting on the ice all put together, BC, regulator, all set to go. You've checked it, everything's ready to go. And you're waiting for 15 or, 15 or 20 minutes for your turn to go on the ice dive. And then you walk to that tank regulator system, which has been sitting out there in the cold, turn on the air and breathe through the regulator, it'll freeze up. You haven't put it in the water yet. So it really has very little to do with the water that you're diving in. It has to do with the temperature drop because of the pressure drop. Read about it. Now, how do you prevent that? 
How do you go ice diving or cold water diving and not have a problem with your regulator? A couple of simple tips. First of all, get the driest air you can. That means going to a dive store and looking. Their certificate on the wall should tell you how dry the air is. Secondly, make sure your regulator is dry. Put it onto a tank in a warm building and breathe through it for several minutes. The dry air going through will clean out your regulator. It'll dry it out completely before you go on the ice dive. Thirdly, if you're going on an ice dive or a cold water dive, not just ice, cold water dive, keep the regulator warm. Fourth, keep the, keep the tank warm. That's right. Keep the tank and the air in it warm as well. Because if the air is warm, then the drop in temperature because of the pressure drop takes longer and you may not get a freeze up. Just that simple. There's a lot of things in there for you to think about, but you kick that around a little bit, listen to the video again, and see if you can't understand what I'm talking about. I know I'd recap these on here. Level. Keep the regulator dry. Keep the regulator warm. Don't set it out in the ice all set up for an hour. Keep it inside your warm car until the last minute. Pull it out and make your ice dive. Keep the tank warm. Keep it in the car too. And lastly, don't breathe above the surface. You see, the air above the surface is very, very cold. The water underneath is not so cold. If you start to breathe on the surface, that adiabatic temperature drop will freeze the rig. So make sure the rig is working. Into the water, down you go. First breath you take through that regulator is underwater, less likely to freeze. Some simple little tips. We'll talk about this some more because I'm going to share some ideas again on cold water diving when we dis discuss dry suits in a little while. Anyway, hope there's some stuff there for you to think about. You guys heading out for your first cold water dive or maybe an ice dive. Very exciting, a lot of fun. Talk to you again soon, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips.